What was you at 1992? I was with the American program. Um, doing the riots, right? Right. Actually, doing the riots. Uh, we all had a meeting at Jim Brown House. It was um, grapes, sixties, um, Compton, some a couple Long Beaches. It was a, it was a, um, a T. Rogers them, the Jungles. It was a, uh, it was a lot of us, and we kind of met. And Jim said, "We got to go to get these streets, hit these neighborhoods." And we got to stop, stop these brothers from destroying our own neighborhoods. You know what I mean? And uh, he was big. Jim Brown was big on that. You know, I mean, we, we, although what happened happened, but why are we destroying our own, our own backyard? Why are we burning our own city down? And, you know, and we went out there, you know, we all went out there and, um, and did our part. You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of brothers from from American, the original group from American. A lot of brothers in almost in everybody's neighborhood, you know, trying to bring things down to a norm, and let brothers know that we're not. Why are we burning down our own communities? This is Los January 9th, 1992, newspapers reported the FBI smashing a L.A. drug ring linked to the Medellin cartel. Six people were charged and three were arrested. The case showed growing ties between local street gangs and the Colombian drug cartels. In another big drug bust, agents said the ring moved 200 tons of cocaine over a two-year period. The cocaine was said to be coming from Juarez, Mexico, to the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles, and El Paso, Texas. The hunt began after police discovered the giant cache of cocaine with an estimated street value of $6 billion and more than $10 million in a nondescript warehouse in the San Fernando Valley several years earlier. On January 31st, the Great Barry Bonds signed a $4.7 million contract with the Pittsburgh Pirates, the highest one-year deal in baseball history. In February, following a two-week trial that monopolized the attention of the media across the world, my man, heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson, was found guilty of rape, nonetheless by an Indiana jury. Also in February, a Wisconsin jury found Jeffrey Dahmer guilty in 15 or 17 murders that he confessed to. The jury found him sane in each murder and he was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences. In April, a Japanese-led investment group signed an agreement to buy the Seattle Mariners. The team was sold for just over $100 million. Amongst other things, 1992 was the year of the Olympics, and there were some major highlights. South Africa was allowed to compete for the first time since 1960. Germany sent a unified team for the first time since 1964. Baseball was officially included as part of the games, and the United States assembled the best basketball team ever possible, terming it the Dream Team. At an individual level, Chinese diver Fu became the youngest Olympic gold medal winner at age 13. Tiger Woods was just 16 then when he made his debut in the PGA, becoming the youngest player ever to play in the PGA. Though he missed the cutting event, what he has achieved in the years that followed is a well-known history. It was also the year of Cricket World Cup, which Pakistan won by defeating England in the finals. This was the first time colored clothing, white balls, and matches on the floodlights were introduced in the World Cup. Tennis star Monica Seles won the Australian Open, French Open, and the U.S. Open, all three events that she also won the previous year. She narrowly missed out on the Golden Slam, losing to Steffi Graf in the Wilmington Finals. 
At the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona, Spain, Carl Lewis won two more gold medals, including his third consecutive long jump title with a leap of 8.67 meters, which is 28.44 feet, again anchoring the U.S. four-time 10-meter relay. Lewis won his eighth gold medal as the team set a world and Olympic record of 37.4 seconds. If there weren't enough distractions going on in 92, the sports world did not escape it. The 1975 Wimbledon champion Arthur Ashe disclosed that he had AIDS. Also, Magic Johnson counseled his comeback because of players' concern about contracting AIDS. In baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays triumphed as the first foreign franchise to win the World Series. In English football, the top 22 clubs split away to form the Premier League. March 9th, I have my firstborn son. But now, on to why you're here, right now. The 92 Riots, also known as the Los Angeles Uprising, sprung from years of rising tension between blacks and the LAPD, highlighted by the 1991 videotape beating of Rodney King. On April 29, 1992, the anger boiled over after four LAPD officers were found not guilty of beating the shit out of Rodney King, leading to several days of widespread violence, looting, and arson throughout the city. Amazingly, but unsurprisingly, the videotape evidence wasn't enough to convince the jury to convict these officers in the Rodney King beating. The riots didn't begin in the poorest parts of South Los Angeles, but in some of the most stable neighborhoods. At 3.43 p.m., a half an hour after the verdicts in the Rodney King beating trial were announced, a black youth in Hyde Park threw the first documented stone of the riots. At 4.17 p.m., violence erupted in the area of Florence and Normandy, notoriously known as the A-Tray Gangsters Turf. This incident here is thought to be the reason why Mexican and blacks began to clash throughout the rest of the 1990s. Somehow, the jury wasn't horrified watching the Rodney King beating on videotape, but the media wants you to believe viewers were horrified from watching the live TV coverage of the beating of truck driver Reginald Denny. I'm just saying. There's usually no big outrage when cops are tied to cocaine buy and sell schemes. How horrific was it when Officer Powell, LAPD officer, spoke over the LAPD radio and said, I haven't beaten anyone this bad in a long time. Or how about when Sergeant Stacy Coon testified he considered shooting Rodney King. He felt lethal threat. We're talking about a group of officers Surrounding this guy, beating the hell out of him with billy clubs. Speaking of beatings, Damian Lil Football Williams in the LA4 will stand trial for the beating of Reginald Denny. Even Mayor Bradley blasted the bigotry of police officers. Following these events were days of devastation throughout the city the worst urban riot in contemporary American history. Police Chief Daryl Gates publicly blamed illegal aliens for much of the pillage. The looting and fires ravaged LA. 25 dead, 572 injured, and over a thousand fires reported, according to newspapers. President George Bush didn't hesitate one moment to send forces to the city at the request of Mayor Tom Bradley and Governor Pete Wilson. By May, thousands of National Guardsmen and federal troops had largely curbed the uprising, which left more than 60 people dead and produced nearly $1 billion in damage. Portions of South LA was temporarily looking like a third world country. I mean, the town was tore up, cops everywhere, and people begging for Crips, Bloods, and Mexicans to come together and unite. This is Los Angeles.
King suffered numerous injuries in the attack. According to police officials, he was hit 56 times by officers wielding their batons. The bones holding his eye and his right socket were broken, and he suffered 11 broken bones at the base of his skull. Newspapers labeled it the rise and fall of a gang leader in Los Angeles, referring to the death of Tony Bogart. Can you tell me uh, what type of guy Tony Bogart was and wh what was the feeling when he was killed? Tony Bogart was a good dude, man. He's a he's a great he's a great dude. He was a uh, he was a soldier. He was a uh, a warrior. Um, he was a reputable from his neighborhood. One one of one of the one, one of the one of the best. Um, I think he brought young Snipe, or Snipe brought him from PJ. Snipe was another another one trooper, hundred percent involved from PJ's. But Tony was a good dude, man. He had he had a vision. He had a dream. He had a passion. He was, he was actually a beautiful homeboy. And when we, when we lost him, we, we lost him too soon because he had so much more in him to bring to this movement. Chief Cardell Thomas, a.k.a. Stone, had been double-crossed by some fellow Crips in DeWarty who had squandered $10,000 worth of his dope and then decided to kill him when he came to collect his money. The news of Green Eye Keepstone's death moved fastly across the city. Newspapers gave him the title chief, leader, and ex-high-ranking member of the notorious Rolling 60 Crips. Like so many other Crips and Bloods, Stone was buried in Inglewood Cemetery. Right now today, when you mention Keith Stone to Jim Brown, he damn near shares a tear. That relationship, that bond they had was unfucking believable. Like I said, I wasn't out when they had that relationship and that bond. He passed before then. But that relationship Keith Stone and Jim Brown had was unfucking real. Because if I could sit down in front of Jim right now and I mention that name, he will stop and just think. So them, them, that, that, that brother and Jim Brown, he believed in that Jim Brown's movement and, and Jim believed in anything and everything Keith was doing because they had a real bond, like father and son or big brother to little brother. How did he feel or what was the atmosphere in those, in, amongst Ameri Cam when you got the word that Keith Stone had been killed? <laughs> Everybody was touched. Everybody was hurt. I mean, dude, dude was a presence in America. People don't get that. He was a presence. By him showing up just to show up and sit there and just chill, and no one had an idea who he was. Then all of a sudden, they see him and Jim inseparable. He brought Jim to the to the to your hood on multiple occasions, a couple of functions, introducing him to people. In April. John Gotti, famed New York Mafia boss, was found guilty of five murders as well as conspiracy to murder, illegal gambling, bribery, and tax evasion. We know that Cubone played an instrumental part at South Park. Was he <coughs> part of those Jim Brown meetings? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Joe Cubone, Cubone Young Buck was there then. He was like a little younger than us, but he was there. He was um part of the meetings. He um, I mean, he was always... I don't know, there's something always in him. He was driven not just to, you know, stop destroying our community, but really to try to bring all these neighborhoods together. You know, um, he been, he's always been big on that. You know, um, but Cubone, he was a part of it. 
you know, Keela Shirelles, Dau Shirelles, um, from great. I mean, they they was very they was really big. High T and Ray Ray. LAPD Police Chief Daryl Gates quickly got what he asked for. Scores of suspects arrested in the riots were turned over to INS, U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service. Border Patrol agents were deployed in the Pico Union area and other Latino immigrant neighborhoods, raising alarm amongst residents who long feared immigration, as U.S. immigration officials were widely known. A badly burned body was found in the burned rubble of a South Main Street warehouse. Nearly 60 deaths have been attributed to the riots. The badly burned, decomposed body had not been identified immediately. At least 300 party goers and 75 police officers clashed when police decided to interrupt a gang truce barbecue. The city was torn up, but for once in my lifetime, all the black brothers in the streets of LA was on one accord, and it was fun. In September, once again, ex-gang members and officials called for a bloodless weekend. The controversial Maxine Waters and clergymen asked Crips and Bloods to maintain their truce and accused the media of stirring fear. I agree to that. Newly elected President Bill Clinton often came to Los Angeles and honored truce leaders. Amongst those being honored, Cubone from Five Dudes Broadway Crips. Several Bloods were also honored. But in the Venice neighborhood of Oakwood, where some of the suspects lived, a lot of people felt they were being harassed because the Bloods and Crips had stopped tripping on each other. Ray Martin, 30, who described himself as a former member of the Venice Shoreline Crips, the gang that officers targeted, said, the police are just using the looting as a ploy to shake these guys down. It's a disguise to see what's going on in their homes. I mean, let's be real. There was a lot of funny business going on with the police in 1992. We've got to build up self-esteem. We need black people that are empowered. Each one teach one. We got to start some kind of dialogue. We need to be a better race of black people, said Tony Bogart, former gang member and gang leader. The truce began in the Jordan Downs, Imperial Courts, and the Nickerson Garden Projects, all located within a 10 square mile radius in the heart of Watts. The gang sets or groups that initiated the truce were the Grape Street Watts Crips and the Watts Baby Low Crips in Jordan Downs and the PJ Watts Crips in Imperial Courts. From there, it spread to the Bounty Hunters in Nickerson Gardens. Those sets have been fighting and killing each other for years. While the Blacks party, the Mexicans plotted, the whites in Semi Valley was coming together to support the verdict in the Rodney King beating. It was so much going on from the east side, from Watts to the west side with JD from the lynch mob, the 30s, the 40s, the 46s, the 90s, the 111s, blocks, UGs, Raymonds. It was just so much going on. Everybody was just out to have a good time, party, barbecue, gamble, play sports. But we allowed the cops to destroy the peace and went right back to the madness. And the madness continues 30 years after the peace meetings. I mean, don't get it twisted. It worked for some and didn't work for others. Most wanted to be part of it. Some wanted no parts of it. In September, Mae Jemison becomes the first African-American woman to go into space on board Endeavor STS-47. And in November, Bill Clinton was elected the 42nd President of the United States, defeating President George H.W. Bush. L.A. was second to only the District of Columbia, with the most firearm homicides amongst black males. And make no mistake, there was no shortage of West Coast music at the time either. From Dr. Dre, MC8 and Compton's Most Wanted, 
Ice Cube, The Lynch Mob, the list goes on, Spice One. And there was plenty of good movies to watch as well. South Central, Deep Cover, American Me, and plenty more. Before I get out of here, I want to say, people on social media talk about the Hoovers being the most hated, but they don't know the history of 1992 when the 60s and 90s met up with all the Hoovers in Manchester Park. When the police got wind of it, they showed up in riot gear and made sure they cleared the park out. So we took our peace efforts back to the neighborhood and met up with the VNGs at Van Ness Park. It's crazy how many of us know each other but consider ourselves enemies. But y'all go on and shake hands and shake it off, man. That's going to do it for this episode of 1992.